Welcome back to Omen World Plays Out of the Park Baseball 21. It is time for the second half of the 1880 season. We're going to see if we can make this push to regain the title. Um, we also have Anson, who is chasing the Triple Crown once again. A few points back there in batting average, but he has been on top a little bit, and he is tied for that home run lead. And starting to run away with RBIs yet again. So we're going to jump right on in and... Open up the second half with Kayakuk, and our trainer agreed to his contract, so that is good. And Sam Weaver is just dominant, but that's okay. I think we up. Oh, they got a 6-5. Not feeling as stressed. Hyam has three hits. Pike has two. So all good things. Next up, Providence. Providence not playing very good baseball right now. And we get them 5-3. Um, Dory Dean gets credit for the win. Two hits for four and two for high, and we get it on only six hits, so that goes a long way. And it's now Wooster. So test herself out against the American League leaders. It's 5-1. An American League team, the top that we can beat. Andy Leonard pinch hit. Got that two-run single. That's exactly what we got him for. And he can still hit, field a little bit. Actually, he's a decent second, above average second baseman still. Um, but keeping him around as a bench bat, that helps and makes it a little bit easier to go to the bench there. Hyam also has two RBIs in this one. And it's a home run. Good on him. Now Providence again. Providence towards the bottom of the league. And it's 8-3. Um, so it's enough runs. Three RBIs to Pike. Two to Anson, even though he doesn't get a hit. So good for him. He's actually down to 309. He's been a little bit of a struggle here. Spalding picks up the win. We're just shuffling pitchers around. And Philadelphia, 8-1. So, yeah, Philadelphia still hasn't gotten the pitching solved, but man, do they have some good players. Um, man, do they have some good players. Um, Anson does get the one hit. Uh, two hits for Fistler. Not a lot to go on. Roger Connor. I mean, that's pretty good looking. Um, this is as a rookie year. He's going to be a little frightening for a while. King Kelly struggling. Mortar Schaefer. But that, I think, is their problem. Oh. Yeah, I'm not really sure. He's just not pitching well. They're getting just wrecked when he pitches. Um, probably not quite sure what to attribute that to. That one's more just a luck. Um, Wooster again, and we beat him again. That's five in a row for us. We're starting to just streak away now, 50 games in. Um, Pratt gets the win. Middle of the lineup gets hits. Pike, Anson, and Foran each have a pair. Um, Anson and Foran both drive in a pair. And Pratt moves to 15 and four. Next up, Cincinnati. And they shot us out. That is ugly. 10 nothing. We get two hit. Pike gets one and Hyam gets the other. And Spaulding gets knocked around in this one. So who have we gone to as our rotation now? Dean, Pratt, and Spaulding. Okay. They're just shuff we're just kind of keep shuffling those guys around. Providence. See if we can get another streak going. 5-4 win. So, good win for Dean. Um, and it's Foran who hits the game-winning hit in the seventh. Um, let's see. Pike has two hits. Anson goes just one for two. He gets walked twice. That's why um, he's to 310, but Pike's now leading the team at 323. And Philadelphia, the Centennials. Ooh, they beat us. That's not good. 
No, they walk us off. That's even worse. John W. Glenn. He's been around a while. Yeah. He's not hitting well this year, but he got us in this one. And they're not even starting Dan Brothers. I mean, uh, that's the most insane thing. They've got too many first basemen. I wonder if they trade. I wonder if they trade. Hmm. 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 I mean, if they're not going to start Dan Brothers, let's go see if we can get him. I mean, I know you don't want that. I'll give you, I'll give you Devlin. I mean, what else do you want? Yeah, I don't think I have much else I can give you. I'll pay Devlin. Yeah. I mean. And I can't trade for Roger Connor yet. I mean, the fact that you're not starting him, you're pitching him. You've thought about pitching him. What are you doing? I mean, really, what are you doing? That is just insane. Um... Like, could I? Should I? Should I put Radcliffe in this and bring Irwin up? Would you do it? You're starting to listen, though. Um, who else might you... Th Consider. I mean, we're old. Tommy Beals will pay for him. Like, no, you're not allowed to waste him. That is the craziest thing I have seen. Um. Okay, so we're gonna see if we can't figure out how to say this. Max age, 23. Um, current ability. Minimum quality. I want superstars. Um, and I want first baseman. I just want to see if you'll part with one of those guys. Like, you're wasting both of them. I'm offended. I really am by that. Like, it's one thing for us to stockpile, you know, minor players, average things, but to have a player like that and just sit them. I mean, Hyam in this game gets credit for the big hit. Um, four in his two. But, wow. Wow. I'm just blown away. Absolutely blown away by that. I'm right, playing Buffalo now. We lose 4-2. Um, Mickey Welsh gets the win for them. They've got Charlie Paber. Um, Hyam has the good game. He goes 3-for-3. Three three. Uh, but he's about the only one who has a good game. Next up will be the Centennials. I get to grape some more. We beat them 6-5. Then we walk them off. John Radcliffe doing the damage. Three hits for Fistler. Three, four, Radcliffe. <sighs> Two for Anson. As they can... And they put... I just want to cry. I just want to cry. I mean... I don't know what to do. Like, I 
I mean, the fact that they're not playing him is the most bizarre thing in the world. And you're occasionally letting him pitch. Cool, but... How? What do you want? Okay. No, I, but I can't have him. That's the problem. You're not playing your best player. This is it's just bizarre. Burdock, Devlin. I mean, any anybody I can throw in this is getting thrown in. Um, I'll pay for these guys. What's it going to take? I mean, you won't trade him, but at the same time, you won't play him. And we lose 7-9, they get 5 in the... Or 7-2, they get 5 in the 6th. Um, Haim goes 3 for 4. I'm going to have to get off my high horse on this one. Spaulding picks up the loss. It is a trading deadline. I guess that's not going to happen. Um... And we play St. Louis. Beat him 9-5. Um, so, they're going to give Devlin some credit on this one. He's, he's having a pretty bad year. He and Holly Hollingshead are not doing much at the plate. Fistler that does go 4 for 5, and Anson goes 2 for 5 with 3 RBI. Um, so, Anson has fallen way off. Roger Connor finally got his fourth home run. Next up, the Mutuals. Eight, seven, we squeak it out. They tie us in the seventh, but we get it. Doc Kennedy knocks us around, but we have the team effort. Three hits for Radcliffe, two for Pike, two for Anson, two for Ferran, three for Devlin. So they all do enough damage. Coming up next, Cincinnati. Pike is shown back up in the leaderboard for batting average. And we get beat 9-4. Levi Mayrell takes us to the cleaners. Uh, top of the lineup gets hit. Radcliffe gets a pair. Home run for Fissler, who gets his second on the year. As Spaulding takes the loss. Okay, 60 games through the season, 36 left. Cincinnati again, Mike Golden. Their pitching is that much better than ours, 4-2. Um, and they get him in the eighth. As Golden gets the key hit. Three hits again for Fissler, who's now entered the batting race. Um, one for Pike. And that looks like that's about it. Now it's the Mutuals. 4-3 in 10. And Fissler again coming through in the top of the 10th. Well, he got the day off, but he got a hit to get to 322. I mean, Handy Leonard's giving us good value as a backup. Radcliffe had a pair. Pike had a pair. Hits. So that does it. Pratt goes to 18 and 5. Now it's Wooster. Boston has retaken the lead over there. That's not what we like to see. We beat Wooster, though, 4 1. Al Spaulding gets credit for that. Um, Radcliffe extends that one out for the run scoring single. Um, yeah, good move putting Tracy in as a defensive replacement. Um, Radcliffe, 3 for 4 with 2 RBIs. That's what does it. Spaulding gets win number 9. And White for Philadelphia. 
Uh, that doesn't matter. They beat a 7 1. Uh, Marshall King hits a home run for them. He's hitting 150. They keep running him out there. How many games has he started for them? 66 games, and he's hitting 150. Wow. But he hits home runs. He's led the league in home runs the last three years. But <laughs> he can't hit the ball. That would be part of their problem. Next up, a doubleheader with Troy. He's at the bottom of the National League. Um, hopefully we can get them both. And we do 10-1 and 8-0. So in that 10-1 win, Spalding going to get a lot of the credit. That's good for him. Anson gets a pair of hits. Um, Fissler gets two, so he's up to 325. Now that's about all there is to talk about in that game. And in the 8-0, it's a two-hitter for Pratt. So he is having a very nice year. We actually even empty the bench. Anson goes three for five. And that's about all she wrote in that one. Now Buffalo. Six and a half back, win this one. It's a big deal. We lose it. 12-8. So, uh, they throw the only Nolan, who is one of the best pitchers in the league. Dory Dean gets knocked around again. I don't know if that's more a function of him being the number one and matching up with those guys, or what the difference is. Hyam has three hits. Uh, Pike is a pair, so he's a 317. He's engaged in the race. Fissler hanging around in third for batting average. Wooster again. They beat a 6-5. They get two in the ninth. Pike with a pair of hits in this one. Pratt takes the loss. Now the Red Caps. Can we keep well, Hugh O'Neill? 15 and 2. There we go. But we beat him 10-7. They're going to celebrate Paul Hines for them. But Lip Pike goes three for five and drives in three. Um, Fistler, the one for five, so he's at 317. Pike passes him going the other way. Four and hits a home run in this one. So he gets on the board there. And Spalding gets the win. And so Pike has moved into the number three spot. Now it's the Centennials. Can we beat? They're the one team. We can always feel confident we can beat 13 5 this time. Lots of runs. Now. Um, Dick Hyam pulls his weight. Two for five, a homer and a double, scoring three, driving and four. Dory Dean gets the win. That would be a lot that happened. Anson also has a two for five, four and a two for five. Pike a two for five. So lots of lots of damage in that one. And so Pike and Fissler are both at 326. And so they have both engaged in the batting race. Connor has gotten his fifth home run, so I think that one's his. And we play St. Louis. It's actually approaching a 500 team. And they beat us 6 4. Bobby M. Mitchell is the one who does well for them. Uh, two hits for Anson, two for Hyam. That's about all there is. Pratt struggling to get over that hump at 20. Cleveland. Cleveland in the bottom of the American League. There we go. 10-3. Score them early. A few late. Devlin goes three for four with two doubles. Scoring two. Driving in four. That is always very nice. The back end of the lineup in this one doing all of the damage. And Spalding gets another win. And New York and Tricky Nichols. 5-3. Starting to eliminate teams, that's even better. Um, three in the first, two in the fourth. Um, Dick Hyam reached on an error, driving in two. Fissler, three hits, so he's a 324. And he's moved to just a few back. We receive our personal message. Um, Jim Hall is the only one we'd like to talk about, so that's not important. 
we do get some roster expansion here so we can bring up anybody extra. I mean, we've got them. So I hate to lose them. Oh, wow. He's actually improved as a hitter. That's good. I mean, he still can't really field, but, you know, doesn't hurt. Yeah, we'll move Metcalf up. Um, Borman can probably try double A out since we're here. So, at Philadelphia, Athletics. Well, they've actually kind of pieced it together. I mean, they're not really in the race, but they're hanging around. They beat us 4-2. I mean, we only get six hits, and they're pretty evenly spread. Nobody getting more than two. Pratt still can't get number 20. Still can't get it. Next up, Kayakuk. And another loss. We are, you know, tough stretch, but teams around it, the other teams at the top of the National League are failing, too. It's a 9-4 loss. Um, anything of note in there? Two hits for Devlin. I think that's the only thing that stands out in that box score. Next up, Troy. An old Haas Radburn. He has not been very good this year. And not very good in that one. It's 13-3. Radcliffe, three for four. Three singles. Good for him. Fistler goes three for four, so he's to 327. Pike does three for four as well. He's to 321. Anson, two for five to stay above 300. Yeah, Fistler and Pike have engaged in this race, and it's Kayakuk coming up. And we beat them 6 3. Two in the first, two in the second. Pratt finally gets win number 20. Hyam's the one with a four for four day. Fistler has a single hit. And next up, Troy and Old Haas Radburn again. He's going to try to avoid getting his 20th loss of the year. But we give it to him 10 4. Just kind of getting things here and there. Anson 4 for 5 with three doubles, scoring two, driving into. Spaulding is going to pick up the win in that one. Home run to Jim Foran, who hit his second. So, a couple of guys got. Multi home run years. Yeah, Anson and then Jack Rowe both had three doubles in this game. St. Louis, 8 4. They're heading towards elimination over in the American League. Fistler goes 4 for 5 with four singles, scoring twice. Um, that gives him a 331 average. That may put him up top in batting. Dory Dean picks up the win. And Fistler has climbed on top of Levi Mer Mayrill by percentage points. And we'll get our draft pool announcement. This will be a wild one. So, Kayakuk. Now let's check out who's in the draft here. Oh, when we're going to talk, Bobby Matthews got win number 250. He's 28. So who is in this one? Um, not as many big names in this one. Um, Ed Smartwood, I think. Yeah, he's really good. Can't feel, but he can hit. Sam Wise, is he? Yeah, I mean... Fred Lewis. Yeah, there's not a lot in this one. So, again. Hopefully we can continue, but... Our team age is starting to get to us. K.O. Cuck. 7-1. Five in a row. Eight to clinch. Yeah, we wrote a good start from Al Pratt. Two hits for Fran, two for Hyam, none for Fistler. That's going to hurt. The batting race, home run for Holling. Holling said he gets his second.
Looking outside for Wooster. They're hanging around. They beat us. 8-7 and they walk us off. I don't know. It's a homer, too. Off, off Spalding. Three hits for Pike. So he's to 323. Two for Fistler to 328. Both those guys chasing the batting title. Oh, Pike has even captured RBIs for Manson. That's interesting. So now it's Boston. So we got lots to watch in this one. 11 3. It's coming in. Fistler has an offer. Pike has an offer. Anson gets two, but no RBIs. Dory Dean takes the loss in this one. And then it's the Athletics. Five and a half back. Not technically out of it. They shut us out. Four. Nothing. We only get three hits. Anson gets one of them, and Hyam gets the other. So now it's Cleveland. Hopefully we can do something since they're at the bottom. 12-8. We do beat them around a little bit. Um, six runs in the sixth. Radcliffe, three for six with a triple and two single scores in two, but drives in five. Three hits for Fistler to go to 329. Pike at 316, Anson at 310, he drives in a pair. Pike drives in one, they are tied for RBIs. And Fissler is on top for batting average. So where are we at? What, just two to go? No, that's wrong. 14, how many is that? I've got my number, I can't add. 77, 84, 12 to go. So, St. Louis, we lose 10-1. That's just ugly. And it's Dean who gets hit around again. Yo, it's for Fissler. Pike has one. Anson has none. Dean takes the loss. Next up, the brown stockings. Magic number gets to four. Okay, we can beat them. We do nine ones. So hopefully we got some movement on our stuff. Fistler has another offer. Pike gets two hits to get to 319, and he drives in one. So he has now started to get back into the batting race. And he retakes the RBI lead. Kayakuk. 5-3. Magic number down to 2. 4 run 5th. Fistler, 2 hits. Pike, 2 hits. And 2 RBI. Anson, only 1. Pike might get the RBI crown this year for us. Next up, at St. Louis again. A 9-5 win. Hyam is the one who comes through with the key hit, but Fistler goes 3 for 5. Um, Pike Goes one for four with one RBI. Anson one for three with one RBI. And Dean gets the win. So Fissler in second. He's chasing Mike Dorgan. He's going to need a couple more multi-hit games. Looks like the home run crown has run away from us. It is against Providence. Magic number of one. That There it is. 8-5 clincher. Al Pratt gets the win. Devlin, two-run triple in this one. Fissler, two hits. Um, Pike, only one. Anson does pick up the RBI to move one back. Pratt gets the win to go to 23-9. and nine. Doubleheader at Cincinnati. Fissler is four points back in the batting title. And Anson's actually two back in stolen bases as well. So a 9-8 win. We get three in the top of the ninth after they get five in the bottom of the eighth. Um, John Cassidy? I'm just talking about lots of random people. Cap Anson, four RBIs. He retakes the RBI lead with two hits. Fistler has two. 
to get the th stay basically stay at 329. Um, the back end, Dean gets pulled after the score gets close, and then we lose 9-2. We only get seven hits. Fistler has one of them. Pike has an Ofer. So with five to play. Fissler is only two points back in the batting race. I think the home run race is over. Anson back on top for RBIs, but and also two back in stolen bases. Pratt, I think, has the win crown. So next up will be New York. Seven four win for us. Fissler has an 0 for Pike, though, goes 3 for 4. He's at 318. Then he drives in 1, as does Anson. And no home runs and no stolen bases. Fissler is now in third, five points back, with four to play. New York, again, 10 set, lots of hits. So 2 for 6 for Fissler, um, basically is holding in place. Three for five for Pike. He's just off pace. Uh, two for four for Anson, but he drives in one. No home runs, no stolen bases. Spalding gets the win. Fissler five points back with three to play. Versus Cleveland. Seven three win. Twelve hits for us. Anson hits a two-run home run in this, so that should help. He has a five for five to get to 309. He's not going to challenge for the batting crowd unless something really weird happens. He did have a 10 total bases, um, but in three RBI. So he's got 80. I think the RBI crown is pretty much his. Fistler has an 0 for. Pike goes one for five. I think those guys are going to end up out of it unless they have some monster days. And it's New York once again. And it's a 7-1 win. Fissler, only one. I think the batting crown is over for him. Pike has the one hit, two RBIs. Batting crown, I think, is out of reach. He's five back in RBIs, so he need a monster game. Radcliffe has a stolen base. I don't think... We're going to get anything this year but the RBI crown as a team. Oh, wait, Anson did steal him. He's going to, he might get the stolen base crown. That would be shocking. Um, so, Bushong has tied him. And we lose 6 5. Fistler has one hit. Pike has two, drives in one. Answer has two, drives in one. No home runs. Stolen base for Anson. So, Anson is going to leave with both the RBI crown and the stolen base crown. Finish third in home runs. A decent season. Yeah, play until the playoffs begin. Or read them all. Play until that finish today. I need to set my playoff roster, so O'Rourke wins the batting title in the American League at 331. In the National League, it goes to Levi Mayrell, who hits 328. And it's a repeat of last year's World Series. Um, at least this season, we went, we played each other pretty evenly. I think the biggest thing is they're better at preventing runs than we are. We did have a slightly better season, though, going 66 and 30. So, Al Pratt and Hugh O'Neill. No, Dory Dean and Ryan A. Walters. Game one. Let's see if this mash works for us. 8 5, yes. Dory Dean. That's what we got him for. One out and runners on second and third. Annie Leonard. Reached on an error, driving in two. Hey, we take him how we get him. Fissler has a pair of hits, as does Anson. 
Um, Dory Dean gets the win going the distance. He throws 172 pitches. Email Gross has a pair of triples. Okay. Now Pratt and Hugh O'Neill. And it's 10-7. We get up 2-0 in this one. We're loving this. Fissler, 3 for 4, home run, double, a walk. Scores 4. Having a good day. So, Dory Dean and Riney Wolters again. It's a 6-2 loss. And Wolters threw nine innings of eight hit ball. Okay. Okay, so. Game four. This is the big one. Al Pratt. We need Al Pratt to come through for us. 13-4. Pratt does come through. Devlin goes three for four with a triple and a double. Well, that's kind of a beat down when you get 19 hits. Hyam had three. Devlin had three. Fistler had three. Fistler is starting to angle towards an MVP. Radcliffe hits a home run. So, Spalding and Frank Fleet. This one's a toss-up, but I think... I like having Spalding on the mound. And I do. Fissler gets the MVP. We win 4-1. Or no, we win 7-5. How did we get that? Lip Pike, run scoring double. Yeah. Two for five for him. He drives in a pair. Anson drives in a pair. And that is how it ends. We get revenge. In a 5-1 playoff series, Fistler gets World Series MVP, or a 4-1. So, yay! Let's head to the offseason here. Yay, we join the Immortals again. We have 10 messages, that's a lot. Review of our goals. Yay, we won it all. We finished third in bullpen ERA. And you don't think Andy Leonard is your top player. Um, yeah, you think we should win another World Series. Build the dynasty. New budget. Oh, somebody retired? Who retired? Pitching coach, Kurt Loiber. Okay. And then a lot of people got sacked. Um, so we'll, let's check out some of these league leaders because I think it is important to check some of these things out. And over here in the National League. So how we selected pitching leaders first, so we'll do that. Um, Al Pratt, 245 is fifth. Quarter in. Finishes first, but Pratt leads and wins. Game started, innings pitched. Most home runs given up. Um, that's a little concerning. He got the win. Dory Dean had 17 to finish second. Now Pratt innings, complete games, Pratt. So good all around. Batting leaders. Levi Mayrell snuck that one out. Batting average went way down because Anson finished 7th at 306. Home run starting to look up. Lots of people even got to 3. RBIs coming down. Um, Anson and Pike way up there. 4 and finished 6th with 54. Anson, OBP, Pike slugging. Um, at bats goes to Radcliffe because he's our leadoff hitter. Fissler led in runs. Radcliffe 2nd. Doubles goes to Jimmy Wood, but Lip Pike finishes one back. Triples goes to Pike with 12. Pike led total bases, but Anson led stolen bases. Let's check out Pike's year. Um, he actually ended up leading the league in hits and triples 
and slugging. That's kind of an odd combination, but he got there. He is 35. He'll be 36 next year when the season starts. He may be due for a downspin. Um, Anson led in walks. Um, team statistics. So as a team, we hit 277. That was best in the league. Um, the league overall hit 241. We scored the most runs, but everybody's starting to come closer together. Pitching statistics. Um, so ERA, we are pretty much in the middle. Slightly below average, but it's really Cincinnati who was dominant. Um, and really, only Philadelphia was the bad pitching team. Um, runs, we were first, we were, I guess, second, I mean, and barely. Cincinnati was best. Now, um, fielding, we're still a decent fielding team. Um, but Philadelphia was just wretched. I think that's the biggest issue um, overall. Um, it's just how wretched Philadelphia is in baseball. So that is where we will end this. We have just won another World Series. Um, and we've made the last five, alternating winning and losing. Um, so next episode will be a special 10-year um, review. Um, and we'll see you then. We'll talk a little bit about some other players that have in the league. Um, so now that there's 10 years behind us. Um, players who've played those 10 are now eligible for the Hall of Fame. So in five years, we might start to see some Hall of Fame ballots. So thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.